Hey guys, this is the freshwater flounder. There are some flies that look amazing in the vise and in the water. This is not one of those flies. This looks crappy in the vise, but looks absolutely amazing in the water. The reason why it looks so good is because it's got five different micro articulations through it. It's on a 45 degree jig hook with a 3 16th tungsten bead. And the beauty of this fly is its simplicity and ease to tie. I only use two materials in it, which are laser dub and ice dub. So without further ado, let's get tying. Let's get tying. We're gonna start by doing the uh, tail itself. So we're gonna use some fish skull, six millimeter micro spines. And I'm using my Vivas 100 thread. Just gonna lay down a quick base. There we go. Next material I'm gonna use, Senyo's laser dub in white. And for the tail itself, I'm just going to pinch off maybe a, a quarter inch or so of material. Lay it down, so 50% up front and 50% out the back. Just wrapping it in position. Double check, I think I just want a little bit more material. I'm just pulling out, I don't know. An eighth of an inch, very fine. I just want that tail to be a little thick, thicker than the rest of the body itself. Looks good. Next material is ice dub in pearl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build up the center of the tail with the ice dub. And I'm just wrapping up and I'm going to take another pinch. Maybe there's 20 fibers in there at the most and all I'm doing is just dubbing it on to that Vivas. All right, I'm going to wrap and I'm making, you should be able to see there's a little ball in there. So that'll help keep the, the tail spread out and uh, in bulk bulking out a little bit, which is exactly what you want for the tail. So all I did is I brought the laser dub back, and now I'm just gonna wrap forward. There's three wraps, and I'm just gonna hit it with super glue, and we're gonna start with our first, first shank. So this is just Gorilla Glue. Very fine coating. Just come right forward. All right, got that locked into position. Don't even bother whip finishing. And I've got my Velcro. I'm just gonna run it through just to pull the material back, make sure that it's out of the way. And we'll do the, the trimming of the tail itself for the size when we're all, all said and done. Okay. So the next is gonna be another one of those six millimeter micro shanks. Since my last tying video, a friend of mine showed me a trick to get the micro spine to open up. All you do is you connect at the bottom and you just tighten with your vise and you can see it actually opens up, which is very nice. So now I have my tail section. I'm just gonna pull it right on back. There it is and back at it with my Vivas 100 to close things into position. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start creating the taper. And because I want this to be flat, the difference is I'm gonna be tying the materials so that they come out the side this way, as opposed to going up and down. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hold the tail into position there. Gonna grab my laser dub in white, 
and I'm going to grab just a, a small amount of material. As you can see, it's nice, thin, very wispy. And I'm going to actually cut this in half. And I'm going to use half on the left and half on the right. And because this is the first shank, we're going to want it to be and have the least amount of material. So I did three loose wraps there. Again, it's on the side of the hook. I'll show you, right? It's on the side. 50% out the front, 50% out the back. I'm gonna make sure that it's the same length and we'll do some more trimming at the end here. Same thing, I'm gonna put it right on the side. 50% in the front, 50% out the back. Again, making sure that it's going out the side. I do not want it going on the top. Doing a quick trim here. And now I'm going to grab my ice stub and pearl. And I don't know, maybe I've got 10 or 12 fine pieces of laser dub there. Just dubbed it. And I'm just gonna come back and make a little bit of a, a ball there. Now that looks like plenty, so I'm actually gonna take some off because we're gonna wanna create a taper, right, as we move forward. Looks good. Pull these materials back. Remember, try to keep them on the sides. And I'm gonna come in front with just two or three, maybe a couple more wraps. And now I'm gonna hit it with the super glue. And you'll notice my thread came up a little bit into the eye of the micro shank. That's okay. I'm just gonna hit it with the super glue. It'll lock it into position. It really doesn't matter. All we're trying to do at this point is to get it to lock into position and when I go to put the next micro spine on there I'll do my best to make sure that there's no glue on it so obviously I just hit that with my razor I never use my scissors when I have super glue involved you can see what it looks like before I pop it out I'm gonna use another six millimeter micro spine Put it in there. You can see it opening up as I tighten the vise. Okay. Coming in with my six millimeter micro spine, pulling it to the back, using my hair clamp to put it down. I'm gonna come in with my Vivas 100. And I'm gonna do the same thing. However, I'm gonna use a little more material because we wanna create, right, the illusion of a bait fish or a leech. So I'm using Senio Laser Dub in white. Again, just a little more material this time than last. And you can always add material. It's a challenge to take it off. So I'm just gonna get it on there. Three loose, three loose wraps to get it in position. Remember we want it 50% up the front, 50% off the back. Good. Now I'm gonna use just about the same amount of material here. Looks good. Same thing. And first just get it on there, then I'll get it into position. Okay, that was just two loose wraps. Got it on the side. And I'll just pull the fibers out a little bit so you can see. Kind of looks like a, uh, an X, I guess. All right, that looks good. Going back to my ice dub in 
curl. And I want this center to be a little bit thicker than the last, so I'm just gonna double up the materials. Again, I can always rip these off as I build the, the taper. Just walking up that micro shank. Again, keeping the fibers to the side. Maybe one more wrap. That looks good. Just gonna rip the rest of those materials off. Okay. Good. Pull material back. Come in front. A couple wraps. Hit it with the super glue. Good. Just gonna come up, cut it off with the razor, hit it with the Velcro. Again, we'll worry about the majority of the trimming when we're done here. So that looks that looks good. All right, comes out. Next, different. This is a micro shank, except this time it's in eight millimeter. Connect your shank at the triangle. Pinch, wide open. Come in with your, the rest of your fly good. Secure everything. Again, what I'm always looking for is translucency. So you'll notice in the flies that I tie, I always, I don't use a lot of material. All right, so that's about three quarters right there. That's not going to be enough, but I'll tie it in. Again, we're gonna want 50% up front, 50% out the back. Just keep it on the side of the micro shank. That looks good. I do need a little bit more. Again, I'm trying to create a little bit of a, a taper. So I grabbed maybe a quarter inch more of material. Good. All right. Looks about right. Same thing. Just going to wrap it loosely until I get to the front and make sure that I get everything lined up properly. Looks good. Got it off of the sides, both front and back. Okay. And back to my ice dub and pearl. And this, we're going to want to make that dubbing ball in the center even a little heavier. So I grabbed a little bit more material, maybe 20, 30 fibers, and I obviously have two different stacks here. So I'm just gonna keep the materials out, wrapping forward. Again, trying to create that ball in the center. Looks good. Pull the materials back. And come in front. A couple times. And use my Gorilla Glue to tie this eight millimeter section off. The 
That looks good. Wrapping forward. It's secured. Pop it with the razor. Good. Now because I might have gotten a little bit too much super glue in there, I'm just going to hit it with my bobbin. Clean it out. Make sure there's nothing in there. You want to always make sure that your articulations are nice and clean. Of course, that helps keep them moving. And I'm just hitting it with the Velcro, getting all those materials back, making sure that they look equal and they look good. Okay, next section. Same thing, eight millimeter. Pinch the top part of that triangle there. Looks good. Tighten down on it. And grab my section here of the fly. There we go. With my Vivas. And you can see once you get moving on this fly, it goes really quick. And we want a little bit more material than the last section. So that looks pretty good. And if you forget what the heck your last section looks like, you can always just pull it forward and check it out to see how much material you had in there. Again, it's important to create a taper with this material as you're moving up. Right, so more as you're moving forward up your shank sections here. Okay, again, everything is along the side, as you can see, looks good. Next material, same amount. And just basically got it locked into position. Nice and loose to start. Equal amounts. Good. Tighten it in. All right, that is good. Now it's time for, you guessed it, Ice Dub Pearl. Biggest amount yet. I don't know, got 30 fibers in there maybe. Pretty big ball. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more. I don't know, maybe I got another 15 fibers in there. Again, I want this to be nice and heavy. All right, that looks good. Pull the materials back, just like we've done before. Wrap in front three, four, five times. Hit it with the super glue. Then we're going to Velcro. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect it to our hook. Okay. There we go. Hit it with the razor. Again, may have gotten a little excited with the super glue. Cleaned it out. Now it looks good. And now we'll just hit it with the Velcro, pull everything back. Okay, now the connection between the hook and the shanks is a 25 pound test Orvis. It can be any mono that you want. I just happened to cut off a six inch piece. Just gonna run it through. Good. Okay, for the hook, I'm using a Fully Mill 50 45 degree number eight. And for the bead, this is a fire hole, and this is a slotted tungsten, and it's 3 sixteenths. So I've got my 25 pound mono connected to my shanks. And I'm going to just line it up, just like you would with any other articulation. 
and I'm going to keep the articulation nice and close. You can see that's maybe a sixteenth of an inch off the back there. It's very tight and I'm just gonna cinch that mono down, hit it with the uh, Gorilla Glue. I'll come back and trim off that mono in a sec. Got it in there nice and secure. Make sure your articulation looks good. Fold that mono back. Come right back over the super glue, the mono. And now we're going to secure it down. Okay. Now, <clears throat> on the back, we're going to start with the laser dub. You want to have about the same amount of material that you had on your last shank. And what I'm going to do, just wrap it like that. And I'm going to come up to the center of the hook right there. And it looks like I need just a little more material. And remember to keep the material on the side of the hook. All right. Looks good. Again, laser dub, white. Have about the same amount. wraps make sure it's along the side make sure it's the same amount looks good okay you guessed it next I stub and pearl got quite a few strands on there I'm gonna wrap this up and then gonna have to apply some more dubbing, no doubt. Okay, a little bit more. Again, we're trying to progressively make that taper. I want it to get just a little bit bigger each time. Looks good. I'm gonna pull these fibers back. Velcro just to get those loose fibers out. I'm also taking a look at that taper, making sure things are mostly even. Looks good. Okay. And the last section of laser dub, and then we do our trimming. So this is going to be the most amount of material that we've used yet. where that bead connects. Looks good. The exact same amount or as close as you can. Looks like I got a little too much there. Again, take your time. Make sure that you're building that taper. couple loose wraps. Now you can get it in position the way you want it. Looks good. Wrapping back to that last section of ice stub. Wrapping forward. 
good. Materials look good, they look even. And now put my ice tub pearl right in there with the greatest amount yet. And you can see there's quite a few strands in here. I might have just gone above and beyond what I really need, but I'll wrap in and we can adjust as needed. Notice I'm working hard to keep those, that laser dub from catching. I want to keep them separated like that. Easy. That looks good. I like, I like that. Just wrapping through it a couple times. Okay. Looks good. And the last thing I'm going to do is just put a little ice dub and pearl for the collar and then I'll hit it with super glue. You notice I didn't put a lot, it's just enough to come up front and to get a little color there. Okay, time for Gorilla Glue. My Gorilla Glue is getting gnarly. I gotta get a new bottle. And that is it. Okay, now it's time to trim. So, I'm just gonna Velcro, and you can see, you know, just looking at it now, we even have a little bit of a taper the way, even without doing any trimming, just because we increasingly added materials as we moved up the shanks and up the fly itself. But what I like to do now is pull everything out to the side and I'm going to keep that tail long and you can see how it looks it looks kind of crazy wispy and and wild but now is where we create that minnow or, or leech shape again take your time getting everything out to the side and take a look at it overhead and as you trim just remember what you're trying to create here and also remember it's easier to take more materials than less and you can see what I did is I took 45 degree angle cuts basically going down and beginning to create that taper for the, the minnow body itself and I'm just going to continue to keep that angle. And I'm trying to be equidistant on both sides. And I'm just going to do a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to use another tool here. This is called the, um, the anvil. These are tape rising scissors. And what you're able to do is just take off small amounts of material and actually creating a little bit of a taper. For those of you that go to barbers, bar barbers use these all the time. And I really like using them when I'm creating or when I'm using um, laser, laser dub. It really helps creating that, that taper and not just having one solid color. So I'm just going to play around a little bit more with the trimming here. And 
taking my time, recognizing that I can't get more material back on this on this hook. All right, I am very happy with how that looks. I'm just gonna hit it one more time with the Velcro. And I'm gonna come back in with the tape rising scissors just one last time. Then we'll do the tail and we're all done. And I'm just clipping the very tips here. All right. And the last thing that I'm going to do here is now the tail. So for the tail, I'm looking at where that last shank is. Again, just trying to think about proportions and how I want that tail to look in the water. And again, I'm gonna go long first, going square. And then I'm gonna go cut one more. Just like deer hair, the risk is that you just can spend a large amount of time and really clip too much. All right, that is the freshwater flounder. I hope you guys like it. I think this imitates bait fish, leeches, and the action in the water is just absolutely insane. Hope that helped you out.